All right. I am so happy to welcome back to the program. We have Akila Moon with us here today. Thanks for joining me on the show again, Akila. Hi, Melissa. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me again. Yeah, Akila's been on the program a handful of times. I feel like this is your maybe fourth time on the on the podcast feel feels about right uh we always have a good time together two scorpio risings just you know <laughs> just scorpioing and out scorpioing it out you're a scorpio sun though too right right yes i'm a scorpio rising i'm a scorpio sun i'm a mars in aries so i'm very martian <laughs> you hesitated for a second so I was like mm, does the Scorpio want to know everyone to know that there are a Scorpio <laughs> oh no I think because I'm an Aries um moon I I'm very kind of like a Scorpio rising that lets it all hang out really I'm not really scared <laughs> of people knowing my shit I'm just kind of, that's why I'm an astrologer so it's like it's easier to connect once I'm really honest and just open you know as a Scorpio yeah. rising I know it's a little bit but you're Uranus in Scorpio. So you're kind of Aquarian with the way that you also have your Scorpio rising. You're kind of open to the to society and the world at large, you know? And yeah. I have uh, Uranus in Sagittarius. So I'm very like open and- Let's <laughs> it all hang learn. out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. That's, um. it's nice. Well, when a Scorpio, a Scorpio energy lets it all hang out, you know, there's a- uh, it is very real <laughs> in a good way, yes, in a good way. And that's why I don't know if you feel this way, Akila, but I, everybody tells me everything. Like are they, like for some reason they trust me. I don't want to say it for some reason I am trustworthy. I am a trustworthy individual. Um, but it's just so funny where, when you kind of hold that energy, people will just tell you their deepest, darkest secrets. Like you're the, uh, you know, the, for some reason, there's that kind of like open chamber for that. <laughs> yes, there is a magnetic field around us that lets people um, open up and just share those uh, those things about themselves. Um, I feel very honored. Sometimes it's draining. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's very um, transformative for me because there sometimes I don't want to deal with certain things because I'm Plutonian rising, like, you know, and um the the person talking to me allows me to kind of just deal with it through their conversation sometimes i have pluto conjunct mercury so conversations people let out a lot of stuff and it, let, it lets me deal with some stuff too sometimes so it's really it's a blessing in other ways <laughs> it is now i hear you i hear you yeah. you're like oh you're coming to me with this problem uh or issue and i <laughs> you don't know it but it's really speaking to me as well and so yeah it's uh mm -hmm. funny how that works well, for sure, we, for sure. well, we're not here to talk about <laughs> deep depth, deep in depth. Uh, why do people come with me to that stuff? Uh, we're here to talk about Virgo mm -hmm. season, Virgo season, Leo season's almost over. I can't believe it. We made it through. We made it through all the Saturn Uranus activations. <laughs> we're almost on the other side of that for now. Um, which I'm going to pick your brain about, see where you're at with that, uh, Keila. But let let us before we get started, just so people know who you are, what you do, um, etc. Tell us a little about bit about yourself. My name is Akila. I've been an astrologer and tower reader for the past 20 years. Um, this is something I picked up while I was living in New York, and um, now I'm in uh, Montreal, Canada, and um, I am an astrologer. I have my own practice in astrology, and I do readings for people. Melissa is one of the many astrologer friends that I have that I connect with, that I share my work with. Um, so yeah, I've been doing this for a pretty long time, actually. So I have a, um, a just an attraction to it that's like very... I'm addicted. <laughs> I'm, addicted <laughs> tarot. I'm just helping people too. I like that. It, um, like it helps you be more open and conscious with yourself. This is what I like astrology about. It's like a guide. It helps with that. So that's me. <laughs> that is you. Um, and I always love bringing Kila on the program just because there is a realness like you talk about before with your, you're like, I, you know, I just give it to you real. And I feel like we both kind of do that. And it just... <laughs> 
somehow our conversations end up just kind of like cutting to the chase, you know, just getting in there. And so I'm excited to talk to you, uh, you know, about Virgo season and just even kind of recap some of the things that, you know, we've seen, I mean, 2022 has been a year. It has been, <laughs> it has been quite, quite the year. Um, and one of the things about Leo season, which we're getting out of right now was kind of that eclipse zone turning point, right? You know, the midway of eclipses, the eclipses this year are activating that Saturn Uranus square, which we've all been feeling since 2021. Um, and so I feel like Leo season was definitely a turning point, uh, for a lot of folks. Um, even if there, it was just internally or, you know, Joe, uh, O'Neill and I talked about this last program about, you know, sometimes the biggest changes you make are just the small adjustments that end up putting uh -huh. you into a totally different, you know, uh, port when your ship arrives. And so what mm -hmm. have you, what have you kind of seen about, um, any, reflections on the Saturn Uranus action getting activated just recently and what kind of Leo season brought to the table? Oh, for sure. I had a lot of my clients dealing with things um, from the past and having it like show up in their present state and seeing that if they didn't take care of those situations in the present, that their future, which was kind of like the Iranian vibe, would be kind of the same. It'll be like a repetitive cycle of um, maybe trauma maybe if it's you know uh, emotional things it's relationship things I mean it, I had clients come to me wherever Uranus and Saturn were operating in their chart that's where those two things were for them um, I'm very lucky I was born during that Saturn Uranus Neptune conjunction so this for me was like really two world I, I've always dealt with that my whole life this energy of Saturn and Uranus together. Yeah. So it, it, it also, yeah, it attracted a lot of uh, people that had those planets in opposition separate. Like, I mean, everyone that came to me, like I said, was going, it's like this, you, you step forward, then you're stepping back. And then you're like stepping forward, then you're stepping back. And it's either in love, finance, uh, job, career, family. A lot of people came to me for family because I have Saturn, Neptune, Uranus in the second house of Taurus. So strong, uh, strong family dynamic stuff came to me a lot. A lot of people uh, dealing with separation uh, from their old life to their new life. Um, some people divorcing, some people getting married, um, other people having children for the first time, other people having blended families, um, some people's families um, being in different countries and them having to be separated. A lot of those kind of things were um, a lot of uh, clients coming to me about love and romance, catching their partner cheating on them after being with them for like four years. And like, this is a new life for them now. It's like, oh my God, what do I do now? Because I've been with this person for so long. And other people that's been single forever, finding that they want to be married and in a relationship and having children. So it was very, uh, it was bringing so much <laughs> bipolar <laughs> polarity <laughs> energy a lot of shit but, to the table <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it was very fascinating to see how the energy in everybody's um, life was kind of being used to be honest hmm. and yourself did you have any experiences to melissa yeah i mean i saw it just a, a lot, a lot of things internally, you know, trying to turn a page, um, in, in kind of a waiting game, you know, I'm feeling the Saturn. I mean, for me personally, I have Saturn on my, um, on my IC right now, uh, and basically Uranus on my, my descendant. So just a lot of angular activity. Ooh. And so a lot of been learning patience. I've, I've always, I feel like I've always been, a, mm, I want to say I'm a patient person, <laughs> but my Mars and Gemini okay. might say otherwise. Um, and so I've just, uh, you know, ma been making, at least for my own life, there's, and I'm seeing in client work too. There's, a, I don't want to say stuck per se, but there are, is mm. a, like a holding pattern that's going on. No matter, even if your life's changing, you know, say you, you had a major thing happen in life. And then like, uh, you know, you, you, 
say you get the degree and then you're waiting for, a, you know, a job, but jobs aren't coming along or, or like me and my partner, like we're looking to buy mm -hmm. a house, but you know, we're still trying to save up the money mm -hmm. and then you kind of feel stuck where you are. It's all this, like you see the future. I love what you said, you know, kind of taking two steps forward or one step back. It's like, you see what's coming. You see, yeah. Uh -huh. you know, for a lot of people, you kind of see the bigger picture, but there's all these circumstances mm -hmm. that are out of your, con not totally mm -hmm. out of control, but just have to, you just have to kind of hang in there um, and like go mm -hmm. by the book and do it one step at a time and mm -hmm. like wait for it to kind of like just unravel and unfold in a way. And I think that we're slowly getting there. I think the Mars retrograde mm -hmm. that's coming up later this year might frustrate that a little, little bit, but I think, you mm -hmm. know, we're kind of on the, the, the closing end of, at least throughout the rest of this year, that is really going to push us into this future that I think we all are trying to move into. Um, and then we've prepped ourselves for, for so long. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just mm -hmm. what I've been feeling personally. And I've been seeing in the people uh, around me. And so there's just still some things to work out mm -hmm. uh, and to be patient with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Definitely. Vir yeah. So, vir well, let's talk about Virgo season, right? You know, we're going into a mutable season, mutable earth. Um, we're switching from a solar focus with the sun, right? You know, the sun was in domicile and Leo and it moves into Virgo. And so Mercury becomes very important from a solar mm -hmm. perspective. And mm -hmm. I, you know, mutable earth is, is every, every time of this year, not this year, every time in a year, you know, when Virgo season comes around, I feel like e this is when ch physical change starts to happen like transitions, mm -hmm. like last, last Virgo season, my partner moved across country and we like moved everything and he moved here, you know, mm -hmm. people got jo new jobs or switch jobs, yeah. or there's just like real life changes that happen in Virgo season. Um, I've noticed, uh, you know, what about you, Akilah, when you, what have you noticed about Virgo season kind of themes just in general over, <laughs> over your years of looking at it? Guys, Virgo is the manifester. It's it's like the the alchemist and the one that is like the wizard, right? The the king's kind of right hand wizard when it needs something manifested. Virgo is that mutable earth that can that can heal that like in a material way. So for me, Virgo is always like to me, I look at it like the seasons, like the reaping. Mm. You're reaping what you sow during Virgo season, all the things that you have been working on and putting together during Virgo season, you really get to see, okay, how much of this did I really, how much effort did I put into this for me to see some type of reward from it? Virgo, I have a South, South node in Virgo. So Virgo is very important for me. Uh, my mom is a Virgo. I was raised with strong Virgo. My father's moon is in Virgo. So Virgo to me is the detail task master. And if you find out what's working, you continue and you get better. If you find out what's not working, you cut it off. That's what Virgo season is to me. And hence why mm -hmm. you said your partner moved last year because he found out what was working and what was not working and he cut it off and did something, you know, that was working. <laughs> so it's like in Virgo, it's either yay or nay. It's yay or nay. It's either yes or no. There's no Libra. Oh, I don't... Uh, let me go here then let me go. no Virgo is yes or no with nothing behind it <laughs> with yes no yes and this is going to be that that time that you're going to be doing the yes no but we also have a Mercury retrograde coming so that's going to be I know and that is a big part of this Virgo season which we're going to get into right because yes. Mercury Mercury's not just cruising along doing its thing it's a you know there's going to be a whole retrograde involved here and yeah, I love what you say there, Akila. It's a, I, you know, I feel like, well, because that's Virgo. Virgo has discriminating power. So when you're saying yes, no, yes, mm -hmm. no, um, although I feel like a lot of times it's more no, <laughs> but that's maybe that's just me because mm -hmm. I have Saturn and Virgo is like no, um, but that's the discriminating part of it, right? Like you know what I love that what's working and what's not, and it has a purification. Uh, qualities mm -hmm. to it as well. And by saying no to things, you purify your life mm -hmm. in the direction that you'd like to go. Like I already know with Virgo season, 
that I am going to be a getting in my front magic room that has become an atrocity of just things that need to go. Uh, and I want to redo my office there. I also need to get into my closet. So that looks mm -hmm. like a bomb has a clothing bomb has gone off in, in my walk-in. And, um, so I'm already looking at it. Like Virgo mm -hmm. is like putting it all in order, right? Reordering clean house, clean house yeah. is Virgo energy. My mother had like white, a white living room, white and gold living room when we were younger. We were not allowed to go into that living room, like literally as children. It was like only for her guests because it's like, you just know, okay, I, I know what gets dirty. I know what gets clean. Let me separate the two. I also feel people don't look at Virgo as this, but I feel like Virgo is also that very helpful person and friend and like that person that comes into your home and like let's say you're going through depression, you're having a Pisces moment in your life where everything is in, is just Neptunian. That Virgo friend can come into your house and say, oh no, we're going to clean this up and literally come and just help you organize things. This is what Virgo to me is. It's like that. Or if you don't have that friend, the person you hire to help clean your house, to clean your house, you know, or I, I don't know, the teacher, the tutor, someone that you get to help you be better at something where the, mm. their skill set is something that you're not that, that good in that keen in and Virgo comes in and is like okay I'm gonna let's go get it together if you need a makeover Virgo comes in and says okay your eyebrows need to be arched your hair needs to be done those nails oh my gosh and and they're and they're not criticizing they're trying to help you be better you know so if anything help Virgo helps you to be better to me it's it's always going to try to help this season in the sun being here it's all and then Venus all it's going to help us to try to be better. I think, um, especially like with all this energy in Gemini that it's going to be squaring at the same time. Yes. So we're going yes. to have to learn some new, um, I think we're probably going to have to learn with this Virgo season, some new skill sets. I, this is what I really feel some new ways of doing things or new ways of doing old things, something like that, because there's a strong uh, Saturn Uranus vibe there too. So I feel like it's going to be, new ways of dealing with old things or refining your skill set to learn how to deal with new things that maybe don't want to change that are changing like again a lot of people now we're doing what uber eats we're doing all these different things now that brought new jobs now to the market where it's also making new jobs in the market but it's also killing off some jobs too you know what I mean like and these are the people that are Saturnian they don't want to really get with the system get with the program so you have Uranian things coming in and it's like okay well we're just going to disturb this system real quick and we're going to see what you're going to do so I feel like this is Virgo like some people are not really liking their job they want to leave their job but they don't have a skill set they don't have something they don't have another thing they, they could learn how to do this is what I'm seeing a lot so what people are doing is they're learning online they're looking at things online. They're taking courses online. They're going to school online. Um, and I feel like this is kind of like that transitional phase with Virgo square Gemini, like, okay. And then we have all that energy, there's Saturn and Aquarius. So we're also trying to learn new things so we can like, I don't know, pay our bills, <laughs> you know, uh, because, we're, because we're thinking about the future. We're thinking about the future and how the world is changing. And Virgo knows the world is changing. That's why it's immutable earth. That's why it's able to adapt so quick. So mm. it's going to feel challenge us to learn new skills and new ways to communicate with the world too, right? Like we're like one big family now. We're one with the internet, with everybody sees everybody now. There's no hiding. So new ways of even commit communicating and connecting. I think it's, I love Virgo. I love Virgo. <laughs> it's without Virgo, we wouldn't take a shower. So <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't clean it up I mean, that's like the theme exactly. I'm, I'm jumping ahead to our end segment you know it's just clean it up yes. um yes. and that could mean that could mean anything that could mean anything in your life but it, it's, yes. it's a cleaning up process and mm -hmm. so I love that and I think that I think you're right on about just um the nature of learning skills mastering skills you know that's what virgo is good at it's like maybe you already are have your foot into um uh you know a, a system of schooling or uh you know something that you're curious about or a job direction you want to go in but 
you only know a little bit, you know, uh-huh. and, and Virgo is like, no, you have to know each intricate piece. You need to know how uh-huh. all the pieces work within the whole. And so this uh-huh. is basically the time to, um, understand that, you know, Virgo is a very analytical sign. It's a very practical, pragmatic sign. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, if you want to change your earthly reality, you know, when we think about the home, we think about the job, we think about, um, just mm-hmm. our relationship to, uh, to life and how it affects our health in some way. Cause you know, Virgo is very mm-hmm. health conscious as well. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. this is where, you know, this is the time that we really get to kind of I almost want to say put the pedal to the metal in order to do the shift, right? Because I mean, one of the big things about this Virgo season is we're going to have this new moon in Virgo almost off, you know, the bat, and it's going to be squaring that Mars and Gemini, Mm -hmm. which we are going to get very Mm -hmm. acquainted with Mars and Gemini uh, for about a seven month span. So it's like the whole Mars, Mars and Gemini retrograde action that's going to be coming later this year, we're going to get a taste mm-hmm. into this longer story that is going to be developing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to be putting our energy to and kind of shifting our perceptions toward too, because that's one of the things I think we haven't really said, uh, you know, that's a very mercurial uh, quality is just how mm-hmm. we perceive life you know what Uh we're what we're thinking what we're saying how it's Uh filtering in you know um and so all that may be shifting within it too especially as we prepare for a retrograde i i definitely agree with you and i definitely want um to bring back everybody's attention to when venus was in gemini 2020 this is around the time that covid started happening uh, well, around what it was April, the post shadow pre shadow happened until all the way, I think until July and Venus was in Gemini at that time. People forget this Mars retrograde cycle that we're about to have is about to be in Gemini. So Mars is about to go over all the stuff that Venus was retrograding in when we were in April, May, June, and July of 2020. So this is when COVID really set in and all these rules and all these things started to happen where people were staying home. And I think this is when people were reflecting because Venus is is an attractor, right? So I think people were reflecting on, oh my goodness, I might lose my job. I might this, I might that. I need to learn new things. I feel like now with this Mars retrograde is putting into action, like, okay, Two years ago, the world shut down and I lost my job. Two years ago, the world shut down. I lost my family. Two years, a lot of things happened with that Venus retrograde in 2020. And now Mars is retrograding in Gemini in 2022. Mars is the action oriented energy in the freaking chart. This is the, this is the planet that goes in, it kills, it destroys, it takes what it wants and it keeps it moving. Okay. If you don't like it, this is what it says to you and it keeps it moving. (laughs) But right now, Mars is going to be in that area for seven months where Venus was for only about three. So it's telling me something here. It's telling me that we are going back to that time. We are going to conquer that time. There was something that was going on in that time for us where relationships, money, what we heard, how we attracted, how our relationships were. Remember, we were separated from the world at that time. Everyone was home. We had to be home. There was like an isolation that happened of, of people and relationships. You couldn't see your neighbor. You couldn't get you couldn't get your mail the right way anymore. That's Gemini. You couldn't even you couldn't go and talk to your brother at his house. You couldn't go and do a lot of things because the government had a lot of things locked down to protect us, right? Now Mars is coming in and it's about to retrograde in that area. So I think relationships are gonna go through some type of change, like you said, you know, and the Mars retrograde, I feel, is like the finisher of what was happening in 2020. This is this is what where Venus was, and 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 Virgo, which is the detailed things that we're doing, is going to highlight that with this square that's going to keep going, going, going. Okay, what were you doing in your day at that time? How can you change what was happening? And this is where you said like we're doing the yes and the no, the yes and the no. It's it's a. I feel like it's a. It's a time of going backwards, like you said, again, to go forward. Like we have to go back again to go forward real quick. The universe is not letting us move yet. There's something else that we didn't finish in 2020 that's back again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that is so right on. And it's like, it's what hasn't been finished in 2020, what what carried on in 2021 too. Cause the fascinating thing about that whole Gemini action was like you said, Venus, went retrograde right where Mars is going to go retrograde. 
in 2021, Mercury went retrograde right where Mars Mars is going right. So it's literally Venus, Mercury, and now Mars. And so that Gemini zone is getting worked. It <laughs> it is getting worked. Um, and you know, I as cliche as it sounds, and I've said this a million times on the podcast, I'm sure, is like your perception is your reality, mm-hmm. right? You know, and that is that is yes. to me the the uh the core of Gemini and mercurial reality and even Virgo too. It's like, it's, it's both. It's like Gemini and Virgo Mm -hmm. together, you know, the perception reality. (laughs) It's like, and so this whole Mm -hmm. area is being, you know, just churned and, and pushed and mutable energy. It's double body, right? It lives in two spaces. It has, it's the essence Mm -hmm. of duality and especially Mercury. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a lot of, what we're probably going to engage in too for Virgo season, but just going forward with the, you know, all the Gemini that's coming too is we're just, we're going to be in this really dualistic place um, for a while, yes. you know, and, yes. and some people don't do well with that. Right. You know, this is true. And so no. is that, uh, how can I, <laughs> you know, how, how does that sit with me? Am I able to sit with that? What does that do to me internally? You know, um, yeah so that's an exactly. interesting point yeah i think schools i think uh schools teachers and the way of learning and educating will go through some type of transformation during this mars and gemini time um because um i can virgo is the teacher right and gemini you're teaching the youth you're teaching there maybe if maybe the school systems might think about different ways of also incorporating um like they had in uh, computers at home where the children were learning while COVID happened. Maybe also two companies and corporations, like they're already adapting to the fact that if something else happens like this again, people will have working from home. A lot of people now are working from home because of uh, what was happening in 2020. So definitely a change I think is coming for how we gather information, even social media networks and outlets. Maybe there might be some change with that in the next seven months and how people are are maybe using the internet or using these apps and things like that that can be something as well that i think can happen with the mars retrograde and gemini because a lot of people were using their their um phones to connect during the venus retrograde that's when zoom you know the stocks went up for zoom like crazy during that venus retrograde because that's how people were communicating Connecting, Yeah. yeah so yeah for those of you that are interested in all that techie stuff i mean that might be something that we'll definitely have another look at uh during this mars retrograde so i'm excited for that too because i like learning all those things i know me too i'm i've always considered myself a little techie i'm like show me your brand new gadgets yeah i know i do have mars and gemini mars and gemini the uranus piece you know i'm like i've always loved like give me the fresh new thing i want to get in there i want to see how this can boost my creativity Mm -hmm. um yeah so for sure well that um that is these are definitely going to be themes coming up uh, and we're going to start to see them in virgo season because we do have that square to mars Mm -hmm. on the new moon we also have a, a full moon in pisces coming that's going to be in a flow with uranus uh and yeah. of course kind of near neptune uh so we can't ignore that either um and we have mutable quarters and i think whenever we're in a cycle where all the you know the hard aspects between the sun and the moon are immutable signs life is shifting mm-hmm. transition is taking place so we can e- expect like a flow of energy even though we're going to have a you know a couple more uh retrogrades come in uh mercury is going to station retrograde in libra we also have uranus mm-hmm. stationing retrograde pretty uh quickly into virgo season so we do have that happening um but really when it comes down to the aspects the Virgo season is not as loaded. I mean, it has the Mm -hmm. Mars piece. So there is that, but as far as like things coming at you and aspects and this and that, and, you know, it's a little chiller. It just in stimulus, I guess I, you know, Mars is going to still be very present within it all, but as far as like, just things constantly coming at you, it's a little less. So, um, so if that makes sense, (laughs) um, less pressure. I think yeah. it's less pressure um, just because Mars is going to go, I think, retrograde during Libra season, if I'm not mistaken, right? 
um but it's, uh, in, it's in pre-shadow during in Virgo's- scorpio it's gonna be scorpio october 30 30- it's like halloween it's like a halloween <laughs> with mars going retrograde it's like what i'm gonna be okay. in new orleans at that time so i am very interested Ooh, in i know i'll be on orleans. vacation uh, i might rethink that later but <laughs> uh i think it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be wild it's gonna be fun It'll be good I, stories. I love, <laughs> I love it. I've been there about two times um, and it was a very mystical place. You know, Mais je parle français. I speak French. So New Orleans was a fun experience for me. I got to buy some new tarot cards there in the French quarter. You're going to have a great time. I know. Um, I'll be a whole week. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have fun. You're going to have fun. So, um, so yeah, we have... Uh, I, what is there oh, anything wow. else you want to say about Michael's is gonna hold on can you pause the video Melissa oh sorry let me my phone so we had to take a moment to stop because all this Mars and Gemini talk uh overheated Akil's phone <laughs> yeah I'm on a computer now so <laughs> and it's charged <laughs> We're good. and then when we tried to start again we had um, a car car alarm on my end just going off like repeatedly for a very long time so I you know already feeling uh mercury's not even in its shadow yet what's going on here well nope there it goes the alarm again <laughs> I always I always have this rule of thumb it's so weird I feel like before any retrogration process really happens even when the planet gets into the sign, even before it's post uh, pre-shadow, I always just think it's already started because it's like when you enter into somebody's house, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, there's some craziness going on in that house, but you entering the house is like that planet entering that sign. And maybe the situation is happening in the kitchen. Maybe there's a big argument happening in the kitchen. As you enter the house, you're already hearing the argument happen. So you're already like, uh oh, something's going on here. Something's so like definitely that's, going that's, on. That's the energy <laughs> of like the planets, you know? It's like, okay, it's starting. It's getting there. Well, hopefully it stops. Um, the moon is in Gemini as we record this. So uh, no wonder we were focusing on Gemini so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So let us get into our transit breakdown because that there's plenty to talk about here. So I'm going to go yes. ahead. If you're watching the video, I'm going to share uh, the chart so that we can see what's going down. What is going down? Um, mm. my so many screens open on my computer. <laughs> gotta, gotta do this, gotta do that. All right. So it's interesting. Uh, we have Virgo season is going to be underway August 22nd, uh, which is Monday at 8 16 PM Pacific. So it'll be very late at night if you're over on the East coast. And of course the next day, if you're in Europe or elsewhere. Um, but, uh, we actually start off Virgo season with a, uh, Mer Mercury, Mercury trining Pluto that day, mm -hmm. right before the sun moves into Virgo. So it's almost like there's kind of a serious note. Yes. It, it's a there's a tone going into Virgo season. The wonderful thing that I like about Mercury, uh, when we look at the mythology of Mercury and Pluto, Mercury is able to talk to Pluto and work out things with Pluto. Yeah. Unlike the other planets, they don't have that, that luxury with Pluto. So I think it's going to be conversations maybe with the boss conversations with someone in higher authority, conversations with spirituality, psychology, whatever it is that's going to kind of set, it's a, it's a nice energy too. It's not a hard yeah. energy coming in. So um, maybe even kind of figuring out what it is, like weeding out what you need to do right before Virgo season kind of sets in like, oh, maybe I need to do that. Maybe I need to stop smoking. Uh, I drink too much. It's been a long summer. Those of you that like to party, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> things like that yeah 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 it's almost like uh it's almost like devising the plan yes. you yes. know especially with the sun getting so close to the square with mars it's like you, you we feel the energy coming right yes. you know yes it, exactly we... <laughs> that 
Yeah. So I, I agree. It, it has a, it has a tone that Virgo mm-hmm. season starts off with, but it can be very helpful because it's almost mm-hmm. like we're getting to the root of a problem. We're getting to, yes. uh, you know, what we want to change, where the transition is. And then bam, the sun mm-hmm. is like, okay, Mercury, I am on your team. Mm-hmm. Let us do this. Um, so that's kind of the, that's kind of, that's just the overall situation going on. We got the moon and cancer at that time mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. there's a nice, um, I feel like, I, I feel like when the moon's in cancer, we're in touch with our emotional self or mm-hmm. what our needs are more. So, you know, of course it could be just a little more emotional to begin with. I mean, it is mm-hmm. a cancer moon, but it's like the intuition is just going to be strong and on point and you know what you need to care for yourself and, and mm-hmm. nurture the situation while you're making a plan and while you're feeling energized to do all these things. So it's like, I think it's a nice start, um, yes. really. Uh, but then a couple of days later, we basically, well, a couple of days later, but we're feeling this energy as it happens is we're going to have... Uh, Uranus, who's a big player this year, mm-hmm, go mm-hmm. retrograde. So August twenty mm-hmm. fourth on Wednesday, um, mm-hmm. Uranus is retrograding, and so mm-hmm. we are feeling those Uranian actions mm-hmm. and just. Mm, uh, so, Akila, any thoughts on Uranus uh, turning motion? <laughs> yes, uh, I mean Uranus is a big deal in astrology because it you can't really predict it, you know. Yeah. So with it going um, retrograde, I think that the unpredictability calms down a little bit more. Um, we're able to kind of think about the actions, about a lot of things that were going on while Uranus was direct will be kind of in effect now. We're going to be reflecting on it. Uh, we had a strong full moon in Aquarius uh, this month. So I do think yeah. that it's going, it's, there's going to be a lot of reflection with Uranus and you never really know what you're going to get when it goes retrograde or direct. That's the beauty of Uranus. So uh, with Uranus moving that way, I think it's just going to, like I said, we're going to review what happened when it was going direct. Get it. I would say get her another download, you know, because Uranus really gives you those messages just aha out of nowhere, right? Get like another download of, why certain things might have happened the way they did in the past couple of months so that's my view yeah. on uh, your honest going retrograde well and, and that is that's very um <sighs> Uranus is that aha, right? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's wanting to disrupt us. It's wanting mm-hmm. to shake mm-hmm. us up, uh, which can be a very positive thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting that right around the time that uh, Uranus does station, uh, you know, it's in Taurus. So it is looking mm-hmm. to Venus for some direction there. Mm-hmm. And Venus just happens to be in the middle of uh, Leo and making a square to the nodes and Uranus um, with the moon lighting that up too on uh the 25th on thursday so venus is playing an active role um in whatever you whatever uranus's last words are (laughs) you know (laughs) before like you said it kind of retreats into itself because i think Mm -hmm. you're absolutely right we 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 do get less surprises or if we do Mm -hmm. it's more of like internal moments where we're feeling Mm -hmm. uh uranus's energy but as far as like you know venus any planet that's going to square the nodes and especially then square Uranus. It's a, and we're in the dark hours of the mm-hmm. moon phase, right? You know, we're in a balsamic moon, uh, balsamic Leo moon, which definitely puts you in touch with yourself, right? You know, it's like this, <laughs> there is it's like we we're very in touch with what you know what's going on inside and what mm-hmm. the heart is speaking, and so it's it almost feels like there's a relational turning point or aha moment uh, that could be a relationship with yourself too. It could be yes. a self love you know, turning point, um, there that kind of just awakens you, uh, and then has a lot, gives you a lot to chew over as, as Mm -hmm. Uranus goes retrograde. Yes. I definitely see that Venus and the moon are going to be friends during this, um, this little square that we're having here with, uh, the nodes are still involved. Everything is still involved. Again, I just think that the fact that Uranus is transiting through Taurus which rules which is ruled by Venus uh, is a big deal it, it's, it is going to be like you said like a, a review uh, going backwards on something but 
relationships are going to be a focus as well. Like I think um, Leo is what we love, right? It's our heart. Uh, and Uranus is the opposite sign of Leo, which rules Aquarius. So I do think a lot of things with relationships are going to be a focus as well. Uh, I, I strongly think that relationship, I mean, they say Saturn and Libra is exalted. So I think relationships are a big, big part of this whole dynamic, you know, especially Venus squaring Uranus and Taurus. It's it's original home, really. Like that's that's where it belongs, but it's visiting Leo for the moment. And it's in the moon is there. So I do see this like this vibration of the sun, Venus vibration, everything. I think everything is going to be enlightened in some weird way around that time, too, but mm. in a very quiet way, if that makes any sense. Like, oh, yeah, maybe there yeah. might not be as much drop, like maybe something may be again made aware awareness may happen. And it's instead of, you know, being dramatic about it, it's more kind of like, mm, OK, interesting. I'm going to take that in. I'm going to just. I'm going to sit with it for a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to just reflect on that instead of just reacting, you know, this is what I'm yeah. seeing with this yeah. energy. I, I totally get that. It's, mm -hmm. you know, we're in a balsamic moon phase there. Mm -hmm. um, the, the beauty of having uh, Saturn now ahead in degrees from Uranus is it's, mm -hmm is each planet that interacts with these two together is going to have the Uranian aha moment first mm -hmm. or the surprise or the shakeup. And then the Saturn piece comes after mm -hmm. it. So it's, it's almost like, you know, Venus here, she is, uh, you know, she gets the Uranus moment, the, the destiny kind of uh, turning point of the North node moment. Mm -hmm. We also have Mercury moving into Libra at the same time, you know, which mm -hmm. is another Venus sign. And then after the new moon, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but we want to maybe look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Then Venus is going to oppose your, uh, excuse me, Saturn. So mm -hmm. it's almost like taking that aha moment, sitting with it in the quiet of the moon, your mind's all engaged in it. And of course, Mercury is going to actually be at the point that it's going to have the inferior conjunction with the sun. Yes. later so this is a very potent venus moment um and yes. then the new moon happens and then venus goes on to meet saturn and it kind of concretizes that or it comes to a decision point or it has this you know we're on the fence about like what is form and what is you know might need boundaries or resistance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's definitely venus is uh venus is very active oh, <laughs> um, venus is gonna be busy I was looking at Venus's transits all the way until like, I mean, they're to get Venus and the sun are even going to be together later on for a while. Yeah. So I'm kind of really looking at all that. Like it is things, I really think things in relationships are going to be a big focus. I mean, I think relationships are what we're looking at anyways. The fact that Chiron is in Aries and that's Venus, another Venus opposite sign. So a lot of healing also too can be taking place in the, the dynamics of relationships where People are dealing with their anger, their stress, their rage, their Martian mm -hmm. energy in a very different way. It can be a shift also, even in the way that we deal with um, how we ex how we express ourselves in relationships. I can see that being um, also a theme happening, uh, especially with Mercury going into Libra, which is a sign of relating yeah, yeah. to another person. So th there's a there's a shift coming in for all of us. Um, it really just matter it really depends on how open you are you know flexible because these are mutable energies so you need to be flexible with mutable energy especially with the sun in virgo yeah and we're gonna be, we're it's like we're it's like we're doing some yoga right now we're really stiff we're getting really stiff uranus is like okay you know we gotta loosen this up a little bit venus will eventually move <laughs> into you know virgo and we get more of that uh, mutability going on so it's almost like we're stretching we're trying to yes. be a little more flexible we see yes. where we're a little rigid we don't want to break we want to bend mm -hmm. um yeah so and and that's you know that's where Merc mercury's coming into the picture right you know here it is in mm -hmm. libra uh, our minds will be on relationships. Our minds mm -hmm. will be on, um, just harmony or mm -hmm. coming to terms with wholeness in ourselves or what feels good, or like being in a peaceful place mm -hmm. and diplomacy and things along those lines. And, and so, um, yeah, we're just going to, I love that. I love what you said about Chiron and Aries. So I'm thinking about it more, right. You know, because when we come into relationship, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Michael J. Morris and I kind of talked about this in the last episode, but from a different angle. But, you know, when we come in relationship um, with anything, you know, we're a piece of that. Mm-hmm. We're not separate from it. You know, we're always in relation to it. But mm-hmm. knowing where we're at, what we bring to the table, um, whether that is positive things, whether that is challenging things, mm-hmm. you know, like all this Venus and Leo energy, because she's still got mm-hmm. some time to go before she moves into Virgo. Um, getting in touch with, with you, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know, getting in touch with yourself is is so important to be able to be in right relation. Yes. You know, Um, with people. I want to just like, there's a, there's this thing that's going on. I like to know what's going on in the ether. What's happening in the internet world? What are people talking about? And I was watching this, um, article that they said that men are, are dying alone or the most, they're like the most single, like they're not able to have proper relationships now with women. That was like on the news. They were broadcasting it on, on different websites. And a lot of people online started blogging about that, how um, men are lonelier than ever now because of all these dating sites and all these different things. So it's harder, they say, for people to connect in relationships the way they used to connect before, where it was kind of uh, you had to charm a woman. You had to kind of whether whatever kind of sexual orientation you're into, sexuality. There was more of a of, of a demure. There was more of a you know. Now it's just like swipe left, swipe right, swipe left, swipe right. You know, on these dating apps and all that. And they're saying that um, the masculine energy is really being put under the nice microscope right now, and a lot of women are really trying to change their value systems in the way that they are dealing with relationships, relating to people. And if they notice any toxicity, uh, they don't want to deal with that anymore. Uh, So I do think there's going to be, like I said, a shift in the way that people are going to be looking at, okay, what is toxic energy in a relationship and what is not? Uh, There's all this stuff about narcissism nowadays and, you know, um, trauma bonding and all these different things. I feel like those things are going to come into kind of like a microscope because in relationships especially with Chiron and Aries that's a strong Martian energy that's the planet that just conjuncted Uranus and the true node also at the 18th degree of Taurus that's a strong degree to conjunct and just have all of this you know so I was looking at that and I said to myself I feel like there's a strong like healing going on with the wounded masculine uh, people, and this is just, it doesn't have to just be a man. This can be a woman with a lot of fire energy in her chart, a woman that's more um, uh, assertive instead of receptive. There's all these different ways energy is is explained and transmuted. I feel there will be a strong, I, I just keep seeing, with Mercury retrograding going back into Virgo and going back into Libra, it's like the self-work that we have to do before, like you said, the relationship comes into play. Before I can relate to you, I need to know like what I'm useful in, what I'm good in, what I'm not good in. And whatever I'm not good at, I need to be you know, human enough to see that I might need help in that department. Mm. And I need someone, it, it might be help from a, a therapist. It may be help from my partner. It may be help from your community, your friends, whatever. But it may be something where you see that you have uh, a lack or uh, you're not really skilled there. So you need, you need another, you need help in that, in that area. And Mercury may go retrograde to kind of help you understand, okay, I'm not the best at this. I'm going to admit that. And then I'm going to move forward and, okay, I'm going to try to do this better in a relationship um, or try to be better in communicating or relating to other people because Libra needs other people to bounce back, to kind of understand what's happening, uh, where Mercury and Virgo doesn't re- really need that. So there's something happening where we have to kind of fine tune something here in our usefulness and then our relatability right after that. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm seeing. That's interesting. No, I love all those mm-hmm. points. I'm, I'm like thinking about my own life. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, that's, that's check, check that box, check that box. Um, and, and it makes a lot of sense too, because everything you just said, we have to keep in mind that later this year, when we have a solar uh, eclipse in Scorpio, right after uh, the sun and Venus make their conjunction, 
uh, we have a solar eclipse taking place in the early degrees of Scorpio. Um, mm-hmm. Think about like the, and, you know, which is backed by Mars. And so there is this, everything you just talked about within, within the masculine and within relationships and even, yes. you know, trauma bonding and, and yes. looking at the, all the, what all needs to change within this kind of like uh, feminine and masculine dynamic, just in the sense of, you know, just the two it can, it can even be trauma themselves. it can even be trauma healing you know i absolutely and i think when you you have to fall to heal mm-hmm, most of the mm-hmm, time right mm-hmm. you, you have to yeah i definitely because south node is in scorpio martian energy chiron is in aquarius martian energy okay the sun is moving into virgo and highlighting libra and like there's something there there's something that we need to look at with action like what what action are we taking how are we moving is it really kind of like in in alignment with how we really feel um is it really in alignment with the relationships that we have with other people um am i really putting a lot of energy time and effort that which is what gemini rules your effort into the right thing you know and and then trying to kind of like realize that there's no line there's not a lining but there's something that i have to do different i have to do something different um here's why the nodes are in are in fixed energies right now the nodes are the nodes in scorpio and taurus are really difficult energy people need to understand that <laughs> yeah it's one yes. of the toughest yeah. nodes to really have because you're dealing with a lot of invisible things make being made visible I look at Scorpio self node and Taurus true, uh, true node as the a witchcraft, the voodoo priest working, um, kind of the binds that you had on you before being made visible. And then you're kind of like, oh, I didn't know all these demons were around me <laughs> or all these parasites were around me or all these people that are really not, maybe not the best energy for you. And then kind of like dealing with self-sufficiency. What do I need to give myself before I can give it in relationships? things like that, if I can share it in relationship, because Scorpio is about sharing and, and Taurus is about mine. <laughs> mine, Tor- Scorpio was like, oh, let's put our energies together and see what we can get. So maybe some people that we've been sharing our energy with, we were going to be, again, we reviewing all these things, looking at how, is it negative the way you're sharing your energy? Are you sharing it in a good way, bad way? Uh, the sun and Venus even being together, you know, Venus is going to go after Leo, being in Leo, going into Virgo. That's going to show also some other things. Like I find the sun and Venus, like the sun can either burn your Venus when it's close, when it's close to it, mm-hmm. or it can enlighten it. And how your perspective, like what you said, your viewpoint really lets you see how you're going to look at that dynamic when those planets are together. If you find that you're being irritated and you're finding that there's a lot of things going on, maybe that's something within you that's also needing to be worked with. But if you find that that sun and that Venus, when they're transiting close to each other in the sky, once Venus goes into Virgo, there should be this like light that just switches on to me. Like, I know what I'm doing wrong. I know what needs to be done right. Okay, I, I, okay, I know how to fix this. Um, and just kind of enlightenment coming through. I feel like spirituality is also going to be something that's going to be highlighted with Neptune and Pisces, the sun transiting and, and, and posing that, then Venus opposing that, all those things. It's, it's going to just, I feel spirituality, religion, all those things, connectedness, oneness, feeling whole in yourself, all those things are going to kind of also come into play too. Because um, Uranus is the planet of individuation, Right. And we have to individuate in order to reconnect back and then be able to give uh, life to like to our society, to the people around us. We cannot do it if we're broken. It's gonna, we are taking more when we're not really dealing with those things than when we have dealt with our stuff and we're walking around and we know, okay, I'm contributing now. I'm in this world and I know, okay, my energy is here for this. A lot of people are broken. They don't know that. So they're doing it in like, you know, other ways. So you have to individuate with Uranus and Taurus. You have to learn about yourself first before you can connect to the whole. You know, some people, they, they just connect to the whole and that's how they learn about themselves. And that's their way of, of trying to teach themselves. But other people, I really feel because Mercury going into Lib- Libra, then going back into Virgo, self-work, 
seeing a lot of self-help, you know, Ayana Van Zat <laughs> kind of stuff, <laughs> Oprah, you know, listening to all these kind of people that can like help you be better. You know, this is what I'm seeing too. Healing, mm. healing, 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 a lot of healing and, and, and a lot of, like I said, trauma healing, because we are going through a shift, this, this whole universe, not just we're, we're facing it individually, but we're all going through it together at the same time. Uh, and this Mars retrograde is activating that, you know, Virgo sun, it's squaring it, it's squaring it, it's squaring it, it's forcing you to look at it. The squares are slow burns. I heard that one time. They're slow burning you. It's like you feel the heat and until you really can't handle it anymore, that's when you make the change. Mm. You know, that's a yeah. slow burn. Like it's on it's your like, ass, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it is that pressure cooker and it really yeah, has that, yeah. that energy yeah, to it. Yeah. Um, and especially when it's going to be the sun and, and Mars, you know, and we're getting close to this, this new moon uh, that is going to have the whole cycle of the Virgo season for the most part. Um, one of the things that really stuck out to me with when what you were talking about is just one word in particular alignment, mm. you know, that it's such a Libra term, you know, we think about balance or the equilibrium, but mm -hmm. essentially that it comes down to an alignment, um, and to have, be aware of what is out of alignment, you know, mm -hmm. that is actually what Libra is so good at. And what Mercury is probably going to be focused on is like, what is out of balance? What is not <laughs> In, in harmony in order to get in alignment we have to work mm -hmm. on ourselves we gotta go mm -hmm. do we gotta do the self-help we gotta you know we gotta sit with the tension we gotta sit with the pressure that like that is like you can't be here anymore you can't be in this space it's not helping you it's not helping the people that mm -hmm. are around you it's not helping mm -hmm. uh the contribution to the world you know mm -hmm. and all that um i think is going to stem from this place of not being in alignment and it could be energetically it could be mentally it could be physically it could be all these things especially when it's physical, because it's like mm. when your body is out of alignment, you know that everything else is out of alignment too. Um, and so, yeah, I just loved that word when you brought it, like that word alone just opened up this whole picture um, mm. to me personally. But so let's look at this new moon. Um, we've kind of talked about it a little bit here just to, you know, but having the chart on the screen, we got our new moon ruler, Mercury in uh, Libra, which we've been talking about a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because the, the new moon itself is, I mean, it is an exact square. Like the sun squares Mars the day of the new moon. Um, mm -hmm. So this is definitely some, some big sun Mars action. But I really also like the fact that Mercury is trining Mars, you know, mm -hmm. so it almost is like, okay, you know, Mars is aggravating our, our, our luminary perspective. <laughs> um, but at least our mind is on board with what Mars mm -hmm. is trying to share here. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. The ruler of, uh, of Virgo, which is where the sun and the moon will be aligning together is in perfect harmony with that Mars. So we may not want, maybe something may happen on that day that we, we may not want, okay, we may be at work, example, and something happens and you're not really too happy about it. But you know what you do? You just kind of, okay, I'm not going to fuss about it. I'm just going to, I'm going to do what I have to do. You know, that could be the thing that lets you know that I need to change jobs, <laughs> you know, or that could be the thing. And you don't really do anything about it that day, right? Because it's a new moon. So you're just... You just, the seeds kind of just been planted in your head, like, okay, or oh, I need to make, take another course to, to get a, to get a, a, a promotion or um, there's just something I feel that may happen on that day where you're just going to notice, I'm, I'm not going to fight this. I'm just going to observe it and I'm going to find alignment. I'm going to find, like you said, it's in Libra, right? It's going to be, I'm going to find a balance here. Because it's, um, it's lighting a fire mm -hmm. to some extent. It's lighting a fire within you, even though if it's a quiet one, you and know. Not only that, on that new moon, if you notice that Venus will be at 19 yes. degrees of Leo, that's where we just had that full moon, full moon. in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So something is going to happen that day that also was taking place around that full moon in Aquarius, where there is, like you said, there's going to be like, okay, I see what's going on. Now I got to move a certain way now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be as emotional as I was during uh, that full moon in Aquarius um, in, in August. This time 
I'm going to I'm going to strategically plan something because this is Mars's shadow point at this point. This yeah, is when yeah. Mars begins. It's like <gasps> stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to go forward, but I'm going forward real slow at this point because I know I'm about to go back for something, you know? So this is what I'm seeing. Like, this is the, the movements that I see the planets doing where it's like, we may be going forward with something, but with something with like a, hmm, strategize differently. Yeah. So, well, learning to do something differently. This is kind of the starting point of that. Yeah. And I think, I think that really is emphasized too, with the fact that Mercury has been backed by this Venus on, mm -hmm. you know, lighting up the, uh, the last full moon point, but in, mm -hmm. or, you know, really closing in opposition with Saturn. Saturn so, you exactly. know, Venus, she's like, she's like, all oh, right, I see you Saturn over there. I, you know, right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking long-term I'm thinking like mm -hmm. effort. I'm thinking like, what yeah. is the, yeah. If you are in a relationship, if you are interested in someone at this point, relationships with another person are going to be taken very seriously. This is not normally when these planets pass through Leo, we fuck, we have fun. We have one night stands. We want somebody to look at our body while we're butt naked in front of them. And we just want to show it off with Saturn across from Venus, whatever relationship you're in, it's, it has to be commitment long-term this is not the Leo for the past two years. Leo has not really been Leo. You know what I mean? Leo's been been kind of looking at Saturn and it's in relationships where it's realizing that I need I can't play games right now. I have to be serious with whatever I'm doing. So whatever whatever we're trying to put energy in, what relationship it, it Saturn is there. It's opposite it. So this is a do you want do you love me or no? Do you want to get married or no? Do you want to have children or no? Do you want to build a future with me or no? Do you think that you can see yourself long-term with me or no? Because Mercury is going to be in Libra. So it's like, I'm thinking about you like that. Are you thinking about me like that? And Chiron is in Aries and Jupiter is in Aries. And like, it's just kind of like, but then we have this in like, do you want to be alone? That's fine. Do you want to be single? All these things are going to be playing out. Like I see Venus just, she's not getting away because Venus rules over Libra. Mercury's in Libra, but Venus is opposite Saturn. So, so, so there's a lot of, if you have a one night stand, wear a condom because you might just get somebody pregnant or you might end up pregnant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's consequences <laughs> i feel like. yes yes meaning if you are dealing with somebody in a love dynamic romantic dynamic this is where you find out if your crush really likes you or not this is where you find out does this person you know and then you don't you don't want to you don't want to get with somebody just for the fun of it it's not going to work this time this is not that kind of you know transit yeah. or having uh you do or you don't with the, with the person you're dealing with. You do or you don't. You either want to commit with them or you don't. And this transit's gonna also, whoop, like I said, Mars is starting its post shot pre shadow at this time. So, are you I gonna put your yeah. are you gonna put your efforts into it or no? Like, you yeah. know, what's up? I don't even think I said what uh, what date <laughs> this was to begin with. Uh, where you're like, when when's this going to happen? Well, you know, the new moon is on the August, end of 20, August. Yeah. August 27th, Saturday. And then Venus uh, is opposite Saturn <laughs> the next day on the 28th. Yeah. So it's almost like this week, this weekend, of the, the 27th, the 28th. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot of this uh, kind of like seeding in of some of these heavier considerations mm -hmm. these ideas of alignment this kind of fire being lit uh long-term serious yes. things coming up having been way awakened by uranus and kind of a turning point a few days yes. prior and so it's not like the it's not like the lightest weekend that's ever happened no. it's, <laughs> it's going to be uh no. there's going to be some things going on if but, you're you know, cheating be careful <laughs> well, you may get caught <laughs> there's consequences there are consequences yes really yeah um, a lot of consequences for in but, relationships yes yeah in relationships and, and so, money but just uh 
yeah any any venus territory at the end of the yes. day is is getting is, is having saturn uh look at it and be like excuse me mm-hmm. um so mm-hmm. but but what's nice is like we kick off this full mo- or excuse me this new moon right we got the fire lit all these things are kind of coming up but then this next week we kind of have some strong jupiter action right because on the uh on september 1st which it's almost like we get to sit in that quiet space for kind of a little bit as the moon starts to wax and kind of Mm -hmm. get some light behind it. Cause our next, um, our next, uh, aspect to take place is on the 1st of September on Thursday, when Mars in Gemini is going to make a sextile to Jupiter retrograde in Aries at the same time, uh, that Mercury in, uh, Libra, is going to make an opposition. So here we've got this flowing aspect, which is very dynamic, right? You know, it's like, I feel like we can move forward. Our mind is on on board. We are flowing with our, our action state. Um, and so there is just, there's some motion because uh, mm-hmm. we're also moving towards a first quarter moon in um, Sagittarius on Saturday. So it is this kind of like, it takes a second, but the wheels start to move and we are in the bigger picture and we are ready to move forward. And Mars is like, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree with you on that. So definitely take advantage of kind of this, like, it might be a little squirrely from the get go, but like, as the week goes on, you're like, okay, can't rest on my laurels. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is what needs to be done. This is what I need to learn. This is the future that I'm trying to move towards or how I want to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, so move, move towards that. Cause it's almost like we get to that first quarter on Saturday, a week later after this new moon and everything that we kind of discerning and sitting in and felt this, you know, all of a sudden it opens up and it's like, Oh, Sagittarius is like, okay, I'm a little more optimistic about Mm -hmm. everything (laughs) that's happening Mm -hmm. here. Uh, et cetera. So I think that that'll be nice. And even that weekend, just in general to kind of like mm-hmm. let off some steam, like go on a little adventure, go on a little mm-hmm. uh, hike or dive into that course that you've been wanting to look into. Like it's, it, there's kind of like a, you know, jumping point from that Sagittarius space. But right after Venus moves into Virgo. Mm-hmm on the fourth uh actually kind of fourth the fifth depends on where you are so basically late sunday early monday we start off the uh week with venus moving into virgo and so we kind of touched on that a little bit but um this is her fall position she says yes she's a little difficult here (laughs) yes um venus is not gonna get a break like (laughs) i mean she's gonna break all year (laughs) no so if you're a Libra or if you're a Taurus or you're strong Venetian ruled or anything like that, strong second house planets, uh, seventh house planets, Venus on the cusp of any of the, you know, the descendant, the IC, the AC, all of those things, if you're Venetian prone, you're Libra rising, Taurus, right? All those things, moon, and you're not getting a break because Venus is going through Leo with Saturn opposite. Now it's going through Virgo with Neptune, op- you know, the big dogs, the big planets are at play with Venus. It wants us to learn some type of lesson in like relationships or our value systems. This is what I'm seeing. Venus being in fall in Virgo. I mean, because why? Because Venus can dissect things better when it's in uh, in Virgo. I mean, let's be real honest. People with Venus in Virgo are really good at understanding the yes and the no's of relationships. You know, so I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because now the action, okay, because now I'm going to be squaring Mars and squares are slow burns, right? So Venus is going to be squaring Mars and Gemini. Okay, now there's 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 friction here. There's a little friction. I'm, I'm starting to feel it again, you know, like it picks up the pace. It picks up the pieces. The sun just came and burnt through this area. Now Venus is coming through to burn through this area. So I think it's activating more. I always look at planets that come where other planets have to, activation. Yeah. <laughs> but boom. Like again, an activation could say somebody tapping you, you know, hey, you forgot this. Hey, you forgot that. Oh, I forgot. I didn't even know that. You know, thanks, friend, a relationship. Thanks, partner. Thanks, lover. Thanks, business partner. Thanks, whoever is that 
being this person for us, that can be helpful for us as well. You know, sometimes criticism can be our best friend. Constructive criticism. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the thing, you know, Venus moves into Virgo and mm -hmm. now she's in a mutual reception relationship with Mercury. So, yes. you know, they're, they're, they're moving, you know, sort of together. They can't see each other per se, but there is kind mm -hmm. of this ping pong effect going mm -hmm. from Mercury to Venus. I think you're absolutely right when, uh, about planets that come after where planets have been before. Right. And I like Venus on the end of the chain, really, mm -hmm. because it's like, all right, well, we were awakened to this with our mind and the sun came around and, you know, we got the kind of the clarity and the consciousness and the fire lit. Well, Venus is like, well, how do we put these pieces together? How do we like connect the dots? How do we, um, you know, just kind of harmonize the situation and harmonizing the situation may take more intellect because one of the, one of the things why Venus might fall in um, Virgo is because it's the idea that where the intellect is very present, desire is diminished. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, you know, if we don't have those blazing desires of maybe the sun in, or the Venus in Leo and all of a sudden it's very practical and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, like, what is, what is my mind really telling me uh, about this? What's the logical so side of this, you know? Mm -hmm. So here we got the yes and no. And I mm -hmm. think planets in fall and detriment, they're actually it's it, all they're doing is creating some sort of inconsistency with the archetype itself. So if we need mm -hmm. to discriminate, um, uh, against like, not against a relation, but get down to the bottom of something, it's like, no, we can't always just uh, agree and connect on it. It's like, maybe we have to work on this. Maybe there's something that needs a little more attention or a little, uh, or compartmentalizing in different ways. And so I think she's going to be kind of kicking up, um, She's going to be a little inconsistent, but that could actually mm -hmm. work in, in our favor. Um, while, while she is in um, Virgo, she will be opposing Neptune towards the end of Pisces season, am I seeing? Yeah, she, that okay. will be uh, right near, well, is it mm -hmm. Venus? In, uh, I don't know if she quite makes, she doesn't quite make it there. That's okay. going to be Libra. Oh, that's Libra season. Okay, got yeah. it. She's the sun will get there. Okay, um, perfect. But but not not Venus quite yet. We're okay. she's gonna save that for Libra season. She's like, we're okay. gonna... <laughs> she's like, I got some a surprise in store for you. Um, yeah. So I I think so. We're just gonna get situated in that that Venus energy. Mercury and Venus are gonna ping pong together. Mm -hmm. Um, but a couple of days later, we have, uh, the sun, the sun is going to make a trine to Uranus. Um, not, oh, not quite to Uranus yet. We're to save that for the full moon, but it's going to make a trine to the North node on the seventh. So that's always, you know, Wednesday, the seventh, we're going to have that kind of flow of direction as to doors opening where we want to head uh maybe just communications or situations that come out that we that are like okay we're headed here there's a distinct flow going on it's very physical outer world earthly based you know we're talking about uh, earth signs here um and it's nice because our awareness is flowing with the direction we want to evolve in right at the same time just a few days later on the ninth is when Mercury then goes uh, retrograde. So it's almost like we get this kind of piece of the, you know, the sun meeting the North node. And then, and then Mercury is like, okay, I, I'm stopping now. Time to back up. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Is, yeah, definitely. Um, I like the North node because it points the direction of where we're supposed to be. I think we get little like whispers of things like that. Um, and when the sun is shining that energy, it's just, it's easier to get that whisper. It's easier to get that like message, you know, of what, what we need to do really for ourselves to help us move in the direction that we need to go in. So I like that flow. And I think with Mercury starting to kind of start its station where it's about to go retrograde, we give ourselves that time to really like 
reflect on those kind of things now because now the direction has just been given to us by the north node trining the the sun and the sun is our ego our self in this world so that's the best thing for me to to look at like the north node the sun and now my mind needs time to just process all of the things that I just got this direction. I want to make sure I'm going in the right direction. So let me just reflect a little bit on this. Let me look at this. Let me put this down here and I'll come back to it. Yeah. This is what I see. Let me go take a nap and I'll come back to this. Let me, you know what I mean? Because the North, the North node again, right? It's lunar energy. So it's really about feeding and giving yourself things, you know, like nurturing yourself, taking care of yourself in Taurus. It's about, I'm going to go eat some ice cream. I'm going to come back to this after my nap. I'm going to. Well, I'm and, gonna and I think that's like, that's a big part of it is mm -hmm. because Mercury is essentially stationing. Um, well, two, two things. Mercury is stationing in an opposition to Jupiter, right? So if we're, we're already kind of in this space for quite some time where Mercury mm -hmm. is like, look, trying to see the bigger picture, you know, we're trying mm -hmm. to understand our relationships we're trying to understand our the direction of our own self growth you know in the aries dynamic and all at the same time as we lead to a pisces full moon too yes. you know everything is kind of like apexing at the same time where we have like uh you know it, it, so it's almost like being very clear and kind of mm -hmm. seeing like the direction but at the same time still having confusion um, or just uncertainty, or maybe just pieces that haven't come together yet. And maybe you have mm -hmm. to have faith around it or kind of mm -hmm. like sit with it, meditate on it more. Like you said, like, go take a nap about it. Like, okay, well, I have this piece. I just, maybe a dream will come to me and mm -hmm. help, you know, uh, propel that, that further. So there's a really interesting dynamic just overall going, um, you know, September 7th through that full moon on mm -hmm. uh saturday the 10th uh mm -hmm. just yeah well and mercury we always know mercury is famous for like miscommunications you know just being careful in your car <laughs> you know just uh, having getting something that comes in that we have to chew over later and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there's just this like jumble of very interesting energy um that is connected to this space and time i think and then like all of the big boys look like they're retrograding i see jupiter i see that's Saturn, right I yeah see Uranus, i see neptune i see pluto all of the big boys are retrograding and now mercury one of the small dogs you know is going retrograde now mars is in its full shadow venus and the sun are really the only two that are pushing forward right now when you really kind of look at it so hmm, i am looking at that as well like the That's big boys are the big boys are sleeping <laughs> and the only two that are pushing forward is the sun and venus and mercury is pushing back so like i said maybe like you said that nap is really needed that <laughs> Yeah, it's like, they, I think you're right about there isn't a big push here. It's not mm -hmm. like all of a sudden we like come into something. It's like, no, no we're back to the, uh, you know, one step forward, two step mm -hmm. back kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And so it's, yeah. I see this, this trine in earth too. Uh, is this on the ninth? Yeah. So being practical too, like using, using the, like using the material realm in a really good way, maybe, you know, trying to get something done that you probably needed to get done a while back, going back to something, you like, you know what, let me go do that thing that I needed to do. And then I'll come back to this later, like something like that. This is what I see. Having faith, like you said, too, is a big thing. Have, I mean, faith is such a big thing. I don't think people really understand how big faith is. So religion, spirituality, something that you you believe in, you know? is going to be something too you can go into it well and that's a, such an interesting part of it within i mean and we can kind of play off that dynamic just a little bit further because it's like that essentially that full moon in pisces um you know as far as traditional rulership is ruled by that jupiter, jupiter. and so mm -hmm. here we have that sun 
in Virgo that is ruled by Mercury and here Mercury mm -hmm. and Jupiter in this opposition and, and Mercury might not want the answers and the details. Um, but Jupiter's like, okay, well, you know, sometimes you just have to have faith or just believe. Mm -hmm. And so there could be this tug of war between wanting to know exactly how something will kind of work out and mm -hmm. having faith or, around it too. And, and like you said, with, um, you know, so many planets retrograde and going back and having Venus and the sun kind of just pushing forward. It's almost like just for your own, like well-being and harmony's sake, you just kind of got to deal with what's around you in the mm -hmm. present, like be very mm -hmm. present, whatever's right in front of your face you know, whatever has, needs to be cleaned up or like, just, it's almost like we can't get too far ahead of ourselves mm -hmm. um, because there's still all these things that haven't come to play yet. So we need the faith there, but it's almost like put faith in place and then pull back to just deal, you know, deal with whatever is right in front of you now. You ever heard that, um, do your best and surrender the rest? Yeah. <laughs> like you ever heard that? Uh, this is kind of that vibe. Do your best and just surrender the rest. If you don't surrender the rest, you're going to be in a prison and you'll never be able to understand why you're in that prison. It's because you're not believing in things anymore. You know, children, um, I don't know who's religious out there, but, you know, in the Bible, it says only the heart of a child can see through the kingdom of heaven, the gates of heaven. You know, when you think about the Bible, if you're not a really religious person the bible is a book of the stars to me personally one of the most amazing books of the stars that have been written if you really know the history of these things and the mythology and all that you children can have faith about everything and anything unless unless they're conditioned you know really small to not believe and you know maybe those situations happen to a lot of different people but when kids are young they believe in anything they can channel things. They can, they tell you their invisible friend is there next to them. They had a dream and they're telling you, you know, I was on, I was on uh, the bus the other day and I heard this little girl talking to her mom. It was so cute. And she was telling her mom, I have a big bubble around me. I have a big bubble around me. And anytime anybody gets too close, my bubble comes up. And she's just saying this. And she told her mom, her bubble is made of water. My bubble is a bubble of water. And it's so funny as this little child is talking about this, she doesn't even understand how accurate she is because her bubble is her energy field, you know? And she said, if anyone comes too close to me, they're going to get water on them. I don't even know if this little girl's a water sign. I don't know what she was, but to me, she was like her own little magician already telling her mother, I'm not going to let anybody around me in my bubble. They come too close. My bubble is going to give them water. And her mom is just on the bus trying to find the way to get somewhere. And the mom is not really paying attention because the mom is in a, a deep, the Saturnian world of I got to get my daughter home. I got to get wherever they were trying to go. You know, she was lost. And then um, she just told her her mom, "Oh, you know, nobody can pop my bubble too because it's made of water." It was like all these things she just believed, and you couldn't tell her anything because she was just so. This is her conviction of her bubble, and I feel like I remember thinking, "Oh, it's so cute to be a kid and think about all these things that." <laughs> so that are so unbelievably not true but then I thought but well, why isn't it true if she believes she has this bubble around her who can tell her she doesn't you know it's just like if you believe that you have this dream that you want to live who can tell you you can't live it but yourself and I feel this is the you have to have faith part you have to have the heart of a child and hence why Venus is moving from Leo into Virgo that dream that you had in Leo, who says you can't get it? You just have to work for it. And then you have to let it go. Do your best, surrender the rest, period. That is how I look at the, the phase of, of Venus moving, moving through Virgo. Do your best, and then you just surrender the rest. If you don't surrender the rest, then I don't know, maybe you don't have faith anymore. And that's okay, but something is going to capture your heart or show you to have faith in some way. And it's up to you to really be like, okay, I have faith. I believe that this can happen for me, you know? Well, I, I, I love all that. And one of the things that you said early on was about by having that way, by having that kind of mindset and, and mm -hmm. that kind of like faith presence, it, it's the only way to, uh, you know, keep yourself out of imprisonment to, mm. to some extent. And when you said imprisonment, all I could think about was this, 
this full moon uh, in a flow relationship with Uranus because Uranus mm -hmm. is the planet of liberation and mm -hmm. like just freeing yourself and, and letting go. And it's almost like letting go is the pathway to the liberation at this point, mm -hmm. right? To allow yourself to believe and to have faith in things and, and deal with do your best, surrender the rest, be in the moment um, mm -hmm. and just do what you can. And that is actually very freeing because when mm -hmm. you don't have that weight or that expectancy or expectations is a very big thing, I think with mm -hmm. Virgo and Pisces energy too. For sure. It's like, it, it's almost like just free, free yourself of it. Whatever it takes to free yourself of it, whatever it takes to tell yourself to believe in, to uh, align with, you know, back to this alignment idea, it's like that is, it's almost like a ticket to freedom to some mm -hmm. extent, um, I feel like. And then, and then, and then it, what's interesting about this full moon on Saturday the 10th is it really just starts this long, this like long experience of the sun moving on to trying Uranus basically the next day on Sunday, the 11th, right? So we're sinking in more of this Uranian theme um but the sun is also just doing its slow climb to neptune after that so uh, until uh the following saturday when um friday saturday on 16th 17th so we have this whole week to really sit in this solar energy that wants to bring us from this from this kind of like aha and liberation and lightening mm -hmm. up to mm -hmm. this acceptance and this faith and this the dream and the vision uh, et cetera. And so I think that's going to be a very fascinating energy to sit with, especially because Venus is then going to go on to, uh, square Mars at the same time and trying the North node, um, and the sun opposes Neptune all on the same day on Friday. So mm -hmm. that week is like, we start off with kind of that sun Uranus energy. We kind of sit with it for quite some time. And then the weekend hits and it's like, Venus and Mars combat. Venus is a, a, listening to the whisper of the North Node, and we're just sitting with Sun Neptune. Like I, mm -hmm. I give in, you know, or <laughs> yeah. to some extent. Um, Sun opposite Neptune is an energy where you can be. Someone can lie to you. You can believe a lie, um, or you can, you can try to build the life you want to your dream. You know um venus also being in virgo is also to me it kind of grounds that energy a little bit more i've seen in natal charts a lot of my clients with sun that have been opposite neptune felt for a lie for a very long time and then one day just woke up from it and was mad about the fact that they believed the lie um i think honestly when when you have virgo opposite Pisces, especially the ruler of Pisces, which is Neptune, that planet is going to rule. It's going to win. It's going to win because it's already home. It's already powerful. It's Poseidon, you know? So I think it's also having to do with cleansing, washing away things, um, whatever lies the sun has been telling itself. It's, it's kind of like, it comes into that that relationship dynamic, because it's the opposition, right? That person that's going to tell you probably the truth or lie to you. Um, and it's up to you, right? With Venus and Virgo to discern, to see if you think that this is true about you or not, you know, because um, Venus is then going to pass Neptune opposing it. So again, the, the is this true or not? And just kind of looking at, because like I said, Mercury is also going to be in its, it's in its, is this on the 20 the 16th 16th yeah mercury yeah, mercury's is already mercury's already doing its little dance so i think it's also like illusion you know with the sun and uh, pisces or it can be glamorization it could be you using alcohol <laughs> anything to kind of also deal with whatever's happening it can be you using beauty fashion glamour all these different things to then deal with whatever is also going on too. There's so many ways oppositions can work. Uh, but I also look at Neptune as nebulous. You can't hide nothing from it. So I think it's, it's going retrograde on top of it while it's looking at the sun. So 
again, reflecting maybe too on things that may have happened in relationships. If you feel like this is an illusion, this is real, this is fake, this is, this is just, what's real, you know? And having faith, again, faith, faith. I think this is gonna be a big thing. I do because I don't say that we're, um, we're not in control, but I think the consciousness depends on a lot of things too, how we, how we make the next choices. You know, if you're conscious, but you want to repeat something that may happen. If you're unconscious, you know, and you don't want to repeat something that may not happen. It's just, people are different. Everybody's different. How they handle this transit is going to be different. It, if you have a lot of energy in Pisces and Virgo, this is going to, this is going to be, for you, this may be a transit that may activate a lot of things. And there are others with no planets in Virgo and Pisces that just going to be like another day in the park for them, you know? So yeah, it really depends it's, on where on where you're exactly. at there. Well, at. and I think one of the things too is like that we have to take into consideration, you know, because when when Venus and Mars make a square to one another, that that does bring, you know, it brings those relationships energies up, <laughs> the slow burn that you're talking about earlier. But one of the things we have to keep in mind too with this tension there is that it's, it's actually kind of a blessing to some extent because they're both in Mercury sign. So they're both looking to the same planet, right? This Mercury retrograde in Libra. Um, Venus has a little bit of a, Venus, I want to say Venus has a better relationship, but at the same time, you know, Mars is trining that position. But this, you know, Mercury is getting closer and closer to making another opposition with Jupiter. So they're all, everybody's thinking about the way forward. We're not going forward because it is retrograde, you know, yeah. both planets, both but there is this bigger picture. And I like to think about Venus or Jupiter about being as generosity and uh, on the high side of Neptune, I like to think about compassion. And so it's like when we have odds against other people or we're in difficult scenarios, um, in relationship or connection, or even the relationship with ourselves, we have to really like the way to kind of heal that. And like the healing bomb, a lot of times is generosity and compassion. Mm -hmm. And so we might be tested with these things too, if we get into a little bit of a scuffle or, you know, have some tension, um, like how do we look at the bigger picture and how do we add compassion, um, uh, and gentleness and acceptance and maybe sacrifice in it so that we can move past you know the slow burn of what's happening and, and come out with growth on the other side so i think that might be a, some sort of element for some people that might be activated during this time too depending on where your planets are sitting for sure so that's all it's a lot you know um it's it's a lot but it doesn't have that quite like of uh, like leo season per se so we move you know and maybe you just want to enjoy yourself that weekend right like i love what you're like neptune like maybe likes to take us to some intoxication so it's like yes yeah, like, music you know, all the social energy oh music too you know get into music. the creative spirit mm -hmm. like Sometimes, you know, the most creative things that we connect with and are, and are able to create come through tension of the opposites, right? Mm -hmm. Or relational, you know, um, situation. So I mm -hmm. love that too. It's like a creative outlet weekend too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. So what thing we have to uh, also keep in mind at that time as we uh go through all that is that the that the moon's in gemini at that point too um and reaching last quarter on saturday the 17th so there is there is definitely tension in the air uh and it's, it's an interesting period to be honest it's like the sun opposing neptune while we have a last quarter in gemini that is like pushing like it's like it's got a lot of anxiety. It's got a lot of self doubt, but it's got a lot of like, just maybe misunderstandings or like not de possibly deceptions, but also just, I don't know what to do with myself. I have all this energy here, but I don't feel like doing things or I want to take a time out. It's just, um, it feels uncomfortable to me yes. personally. You may want to hide under the covers <laughs> and not have, you know, people or company around also too kind of energy maybe an energy where you might want to take a break from people or or relationships or things and just kind of just because mars is already in its it's in 
at this point it's in its post pre-shadow phase it hasn't gone retrograde yet but yeah. it's about to or maybe you can see that you need to take time away from people or, or things or your surrounding or your environment and you're kind of reflecting on it more like oh I'm around my this right now but I don't want to be or how can I figure out how to maybe have your own time or your own space something like that this is what I'm seeing yeah with the I moon and, and Mars together because I'm a moon and Mars native I have it in Aries we like our time and our space it helps us to regroup um it helps to kind of regenerate the Mars too. So maybe Mars is kind of getting nurturing at this time with the moon there. Some type of, it's being fed in a, in a way by the moon um, as it's also, you know, trining Saturn. Again, any Saturn, Saturn, anything, it, it causes, it, it asks you to be mature. You know, even when Saturn is retrograde, it's still asking that same question, you know? So, I also think that how can we, you know, with the moon and Mars, Saturn, having a conversation while this is happening, it's solitude and, and just understanding what that really means, you know, peace of mind, because Mars is the duality of the mind. You know, how do you get that peace of mind may be something that you're also looking at around that time. Um, yeah. Yeah, because we're going to, we're going to want it, you know, we have the pressure of the luminaries in a square. Definitely. So, you know, we think about that time as a, as Dane Rudyard says, the crisis of consciousness, right? Exactly. It's like, I'm, I'm having a, a mental crisis right now and I need to find exactly. that relief and that, exactly. and that peace of the Mercury retrograde in Libra. And then there, like you said, Mercury is opposite Jupiter. Yeah. So the mind is going to need some type of rest. They're both retrograding. Um. So there's something about resting the mind too, you know, so balancing the mind uh too many things are coming quick at the mind or too many thoughts because jupiter is opposite that energy and i think again the moon is solid with mars because it's talking to saturn so i just think like equilibrium of the mind solitude peacefulness tranquility how do i get those things how do i get things to operate right or the way that i want them to this is what I'm seeing here too. Yeah. And so it's almost like this, there's like some definitely interesting energy and tension on Saturday yes. and then Sunday comes around and you know, the, the sun or the moon moves into cancer. So it kind of takes some pressure off that Gemini exactly. space. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, Mercury, then Mercury and uh, Jupiter, are then in a T square with the moon, um, right at the same time as the sun is trining Pluto. So exactly. this feels like a very intuitive, like mm -hmm. I am sitting with myself, I'm meditating on something, I'm getting mm -hmm. down to like brass tacks about mm -hmm. like what I really need to focus on or clear out or get serious about, or, you know, it, it's, it's Sunday has, um, I don't know. It has just this vibe that what things just get, it, through tension everything starts to come together mm -hmm. to some extent and you if that makes sense it's yes. and you kind of align with it yes because right now pluto is in capricorn to the moon being in cancer it doesn't it doesn't get a break either really when it goes into cancer because it will be in a day two time it will be opposing pluto what right after the, the sun just spoke to pluto the day before so yeah. it's there is, I feel like there's going to be some type of, in Virgo, it's looking at Pluto in Earth, and then it's looking into water. So again, I, I just feel like there's going to be a moment where you need to sit with yourself, maybe at home or with people that feel like home or around. I just, cleansing, healing, again, because the moon in Cancer is where you nurture yourself. And I, I also see like the cutting of something. I don't know why I'm looking at this and I'm seeing like scissors, like cut, like the T square coming in. I just see scissors cutting away at something. Well, Pluto sure. does like to, to, you know, Pluto, does, Pluto can cut <laughs> and so <laughs> can, uh, can, so can the sun in uh, Virgo, right? Virgo, it has exactly. this, this discerning type of 
moment to it. And of course, you know, Mars is getting more concentrated. Mm -hmm. Venus just, Venus just went because, because basically we end Virgo season with this Mercury and Pluto Mm -hmm. and sun action. uh, But right before it moves into our, you know, autumn equinox, we Mm -hmm. have Venus trining Uranus. And so So, you know, Venus just made a square to Mars and all of a sudden now it's like, all right, I'm looking at Mm -hmm. Uranus. We talk about that freedom, that liberation, Mm -hmm. that, um, which can cut something too, you know, whatever that might be. It could be cutting a relationship. It could be cutting out something that is within the self that like gets in the way of relationship, you know, like there's all these ideas that can come up with that. Yeah, there's so many ways the energy can be expressed. But I just know when Pluto, when bad boy Pluto comes and it's talking to someone, it's direct, straightforward. It doesn't, it doesn't play games. So um, just looking at that energy and then, you know, Venus will then come and have a conversation with Pluto too later on. Um, there's, there's like that focus. I need to focus. What do I, and then like Mars is still doing its thing. It's slowing down even more. It's slowing down even more. So I'm really seeing a cut this is what i'm seeing like you said a cut of anything but there's a cut of something what is that the cut of discernment like yeah. I'm, getting to, I'm like i've realized <laughs> uh you know because the sun at this point is like getting distance from that neptune mm-hmm. and it's like okay mm-hmm. i you know i had i had my vacation with that i had my moment of like eh, and now mm-hmm. pluto's like no this is exactly what needs to be you know, both the Virgo and Pluto energy is all about purification and wants mm-hmm. to get to the nugget, right? Wants to get to exactly. the core of what what is. And so I think that's a very, um, especially in the beginning part of the week on the last days of Virgo season on the 19th and 20th, while mm-hmm. the moon is lighting up that Pluto placement um, and Venus with Uranus, it's like, yeah, we get this we get this kind of like final and then we then we get to the equinox you know which is a whole yeah. other turn of the page and it always is so that's that's kind of virgo season essentially in a wrap it's an interesting one um that i think we're going to flow through uh if you had a, I, I love the challenge of one word if you had one word to describe virgo season this year what what would your word be slow steps what was that uh, I have two words, slow steps. I said one word, Akila. Okay. <laughs> no, you can have your two. You I can have your two words. Slow steps. Like, there's no rushing with this season. You can't. It won't. It's not like other Virgo seasons that come around and you can just, you know, plant, 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 plant. I'm seeing more like instead of planting, you're kind of cleaning out the the soil, you know, that has everything. And like, you're not, this season is not a planting season for Virgo. I feel like it's more of a, let me take slow steps. I'm going to calculate my steps. I'm going to take my time with my steps because Neptune is opposite me. It's opposite my energy. I want to make sure that the steps I'm taking are concrete steps because Saturn is also going to be trining that energy. I mean, excuse me. I'm thinking about Pluto. Pluto's gonna be there. <laughs> Pluto's gonna be there at the end. It's gonna let you know if whatever you did was worth it or not. That's how I look at it. So slow steps. And yeah. you, what do you think about Pluto. Virgo season? Well, I'm taking the liberty of two words too. Then <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, tidy up. Nice. You know, tight, tidy up. Whatever, whatever that looks like for for you. Um, because it really goes well with the slow steps. When we don't want to tidy up in a hurry, we want to be very intentional. No. We want to be very discerning. We want to, um, you know, uh, take our time with it and fully understand where we're going within all mm-hmm. of it. But as we move, part, you know, that's that's the thing with Earth signs and especially like Virgo energy is there's this idea of control and wanting control over things. Mm-hmm. And when life's not moving as fast, it's like we can put our control into the things that are immediately around us. And, and mm-hmm. tidying up our lives is part mm-hmm. of that, like having control of the, the direction uh, and, and our surroundings by, um, you know, because when we have a clean environment, we have a clean mind, we have a clean mm-hmm. outlook. And so however that looks you know on the spiritual level on the emotional on the mental level on the physical level it's really kind of like a tidying up energy Mm -hmm. 
in in my mind. So slow steps and tidy yeah. it up, people. Yeah, tidy it up, people. So all right, Akila. Well, that was uh, fa- a fascinating look at what Virgo might bring to us. Uh, we'll have to see how it all pans out. Um, <laughs> wish everybody luck on on that front. Um, so where can people find you? What do you have going on? Yeah, so people can find me on um, YouTube at Akila Moon. You can Google that. I mean, you can um, you can Google it actually too. I'm on, um, I'm on Instagram, Akila Moon. Also, my website is going to be relaunching again uh, at the beginning of next year. I'm really working on a lot of new things that I want to give and share with my with my clients and you guys. You guys can find me online and you can email me at achillastrology at gmail.com. That's always the quickest way to get to me that. You can DM me as well on Instagram at Moon if you'd like to book a reading with me. Um, and uh, yeah, you can definitely find me online. I'm always putting out videos and content uh, and educating astrology, doing readings, tarot readings and stuff like that. So that's that's how you can find me online um, and you can email me as well. When the website is back up, it will be a killmoon.com that's relaunching in the beginning of next year. So I'm looking forward to that again because I'm rebranding myself. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, perfect time to start thinking about those things as Mercury goes retrograde. It's like uh, everybody... Everybody goes back in, does the reset, the websites over, does yes. the, all the apps have to update, you know, like all those yes. things. So that's what's going to be happening actually. Yeah. So. Well, I will be sure to share Akila's uh, information on my site as well in a blog post where you can find that over at energeticprinciples.com. You can also find me on Instagram at energetic principles. Um, and of course, if you would like my monthly newsletter in your inbox that comes out at the beginning of every month uh, called the heavenly wind, come on over and sign up for my mailing list, which you can do so at the bottom of the front page of my website. And uh, yeah, there's a, uh, I think that that that's it there. You know, if you, if you liked our conversation here today, you know, share it with a friend, leave a review wherever you listen to this podcast. Um, Cause it just helps everything to be seen further. And so, yeah, well, you know, uh, thank you, Akila, for joining me again on our, our fourth escapade uh, yeah, together. Definitely. Um, it was my pleasure. Yeah, and so she'll definitely be back at another time. And uh, we are wishing you well for Virgo season. You know, take care of yourself, slow steps, tidy up. (laughs) All right, everyone, take care. And as always, may the stars be with you.